Oscillator Analysis. In this video, you will learn how oscillators are analyzed, direction, area, and divergences. Oscillators are analyzed in three dimensions. Direction, whether it is bullish or bearish. Area, whether it is overbought or oversold. Divergences, whether it is bullish or bearish. Let's look at the direction of the oscillator. Similar to prices, momentum moves in trends. The same techniques that are used for analyzing price trends can be applied to momentum. When the indicator goes below its trend line, we have a bearish signal. When the indicator goes above its trend line, we have a bullish signal. When the indicator goes below its moving average, we have a bearish signal. When the indicator goes above its moving average, we have a bullish signal. Keep in mind that a trend reversal in momentum is not always associated with a similar reversal in the price. Price is the boss. The area. The financial markets are essentially driven by psychological forces. Our emotions move from one extreme to another, from greed to fear, from hope to despair. This is what causes momentum indicators to fluctuate from oversold to overbought levels. In a sense, momentum reflects crowd psychology and measures the intensity of the emotions of market participants. Banded oscillators fluctuate between 0% and 100%. For RSI and IMI, extreme levels are those beyond 70% and 30%. For stochastic, extreme levels are those beyond 80% and 20%. Other oscillators like ROC or MACD are unbanded, meaning they have no minimum and maximum values, and traders must manually identify overbought and oversold lines. Extreme levels are manually determined and marked where the indicator shows a cluster of previous tops or bottoms. Extreme momentum readings indicate a possible correction in price. These signals are used by some traders to exit or enter new positions against the previous direction. When using IMI and RSI, a bullish signal occurs when the indicator goes below 30 and then crosses above it from below. A bearish signal occurs when the indicator goes above 70 and then crosses below it from above. If more than one indicator gives the same signal, the stronger it becomes. The third way of analyzing oscillators is through divergences. Divergences can be seen by comparing the price of a security with the movement of an oscillator. If price is making higher highs, the oscillator should also be making higher highs, and vice versa. If they are not, that means the price and the oscillator are diverging, and that's why it's called divergence. Divergence serves as a warning that the trend is about to change or a correction is imminent. There are three types of divergences. The classic divergence, the hidden divergence, and the complex divergence. Classic divergence. If price is making lower lows, but the oscillator is not, this is considered to be bullish divergence. This normally occurs at the end of a downtrend and can sometimes signal that the price will rise, as price and momentum are normally expected to move in line with each other. It is also called positive divergence because the technical position is said to be improving, because even though the price is declining, it is declining at a slower and slower pace. If the price is making a higher high but the oscillator is not, then we have a bearish divergence. This normally occurs at the end of an uptrend and can sometimes signal that the price will drop, as price and momentum are normally expected to move in line with each other. It is also called negative divergence because the technical position is said to be deteriorating because even though the price is rising, it is rising at a slower and slower pace. Momentum oscillators serve as a leading indicator and divergences are used when trying to detect market tops and bottoms. Momentum reversal precedes reversals in price, and therefore a shift in momentum is regarded as a warning of a possible price reversal. However, not all divergences result in good signals, especially during a strong trend. 
How to Spot Hidden Divergences Hidden bullish divergence occurs when the price fails to move lower, but the oscillator drops, making a lower low. This normally occurs at the end of a downtrend and can sometimes signal a bullish trend reversal. A hidden bearish divergence occurs when the price fails to move higher, but the oscillator rises, making a higher high. This normally occurs at the end of an uptrend and can sometimes signal a bearish trend reversal. Let's see what complex divergences are. Price trends are determined by the interaction of different time cycles. Most momentum oscillators reflect only one cycle, since they are constructed using a specific look-back period. To reflect more than one cycle, we should compare two momentum indicators like ROC or RSI, constructed from two different period. The complex divergence is a divergence between two oscillators of different periods instead of an oscillator and price. It is important to compare two time spans that are separated by a substantial interval in order to reflect different time cycles, for example, 7 and 14 periods. When a shorter period indicator bottoms and starts to rise towards zero, while the longer continues lower to new lows, the two cycles are out of sync. This normally occurs at the end of a downtrend and can sometimes signal a bullish trend reversal. When the shorter period indicator reaches a peak and starts to drop towards zero, while the longer continues to rally to new highs, the two cycles are out of sync. This normally occurs at the end of an uptrend and can sometimes signal a bearish trend reversal. One of the indications towards the strength of divergences is the number of divergences. The more the divergences, the greater their significance. Failure of the price to correct after a divergence indicates that when the correction does begin, it will likely be much more severe. The time span between divergences is another indication towards strength. The greater the time between one divergence and another, the greater their significance. Divergences in a longer period oscillator are considered more important than divergences in a shorter period oscillator. A critical element to the strength of a divergence is the closeness of the momentum oscillator to its equilibrium level. The value of the oscillator at the time of the divergence is very important. Like in our example, note how the RSI and ROC are close to their equilibrium level at the time of the divergence. The closer the oscillator is to the equilibrium, the larger is the expected sell-off. Most of the time, divergences proceed in a fairly orderly way. They get progressively lower or higher as per the direction of the trend. Then, just as you expect the price to drop, a final rally develops, and this advance will push the momentum indicator back above at least one or two previous peaks. Typically, this latest rally will prove to be a divergence trap, after which the price will then fall in the manner previously expected. This final move is usually because of some unexpected news event that causes short covering. When the short covering ends, there is very little to support the price, and down it goes. Let's summarize the various types of divergences. Classic divergence occurs when price makes a new high-low, but the oscillator does not. Hidden divergence occurs when the oscillator makes a new high-low, but the price does not. Complex diversion occurs when the longer period oscillator makes a new high-low, but the shorter period oscillator does not while moving towards its equilibrium level. Look for bearish divergences in an uptrend and bullish divergences in a downtrend and be advised that divergences do not work well in a range. Divergences do not represent actual buy or sell signals, but act, however, as an early warning of possible price reversal. In our next video, we will talk about volatility indicators. Thank you for watching.